Hi everyone, this is going to be a walkthrough of our two endocrine system models that we have in the Bio 139 lab at BCTC. Um, first, I'm going to point out that I'm only going to go through what each of these glands actually is. I will not be going through the disorders and the hormones associated with the glands, but you are responsible for knowing all of the material from your chart in this lab, as well as what they tie in with on these models. For example, when we look at the anterior pituitary, you do need to know all of the hormones that it makes. You need to know the stimuli for each of those hormones. You need to know the function, the target organ, uh, disorders associated with each of those. So it is absolutely vital that you have your chart filled out as well as knowing the names of each of these glands. So let's go ahead and get started. Up here in the top left, this is the pituitary gland. It sits right here, but we've blown it up so that you can see it right here. Now the pituitary gland has a few different parts. This structure right here is the infundibulum. It's what uh, the pituitary gland hangs from the hypothalamus by. This portion right here, which is a little darker, is the anterior pituitary, the adenohypophysis. The anterior pituitary, remember it is glandular tissue. It makes all of its own hormones. Here is the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis. The neurohypophysis is a little lighter and it is neural tissue. It does not make its two hormones. They were made in the hypothalamus. They are just stored in and released from the posterior pituitary. Now on this model, there's two ways to know which is anterior, which is posterior. First, like I said, the anterior is darker staining, so they've made it darker on this model. The posterior is lighter staining, so they've made it lighter on this model. Now also, it's just a blow up of this structure right here, and you can tell from the orientation that the person seems to be looking to the right, our right, I guess it would be their left. So if they're looking this direction, then this would be the anterior of the, the pituitary gland. This would be the front. Moving down into the neck, here we see the thyroid gland, which is what we see right here. Now the thyroid gland has the two lobes and connected by the isthmus, this smaller, narrower area right here in the middle. And if we flip around and look at this person from behind, on the back of the thyroid gland, we see these little nodules. These are the parathyroid glands. Uh, again, we can see each lobe of the thyroid from behind, and here's that isthmus that we just saw, but this is actually showing us the parathyroid glands. Moving down a little further on the surface of each kidney, we see the adrenal glands, and that's what we see right over here. Now remember, the adrenal gland is actually made of several different areas. So here is the adrenal cortex, and here is the adrenal medulla. Keep in mind the adrenal cortex does have three different layers with three different functions, the zona uh, glomerulosa, the zona fasciculata, and the zona reticularis. All of those are here within the cortex of the adrenal gland. And the adrenal medulla is its own thing. You know, it, remember it's a part of your uh, sympathetic nervous system. This is where epinephrine and norepinephrine come from, that fight or flight response. Here we see the pancreas. Now in all of the other glands, all they've done is just drawn them bigger. That's not the case for the pancreas. Here, the pancreas, since it is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland, different parts of the pancreas uh, have different functions. 
really what we see here is one of the islets of Langerhans. So this is not simply just a bigger picture of the pancreas. This is actually a microscopic view of some of the pancreatic tissue. This is the islets of Langerhans. This is the endocrine portion. Now remember in the islets, there are alpha cells, beta cells, uh, delta cells. You do not need to be able to distinguish, but you do need to know the functions of the alpha cells and the beta cells for lab. And then we get down to the bottom, the reproductive portions um, over here on the left and then down at the bottom here. This is the testes and over on the right, which goes with the higher image here. These are the ovaries, which we see here. And here is our second endocrine model, um, really is showing us all of the same stuff, um, but let's go ahead and look to see what everything is here. Here in the top left, this is the pituitary and hypothalamus. So here we can see the hypothalamus and we can actually see uh, the uh, supraoptic nucleus and the paraventricular nucleus that extend through the infundibulum down into the posterior pituitary gland. And then we can see these other neurons that only extend down into the infundibulum and stop not reaching the anterior pituitary gland. So when you're learning the pituitary gland, in this instance, since we can't see which way the person is facing, how do you know anterior versus posterior? Well, that means you have to know the structure. Remember, the posterior is neural tissue that contains all of those axon terminals that began up here in the hypothalamus. So just look to see this one, the yellow in this case, it has those axons that extend all the way down, so this has to be posterior. This one, the green one, has to be anterior because it does not have any axons that extend down into it. Next, uh, this is the larynx and trachea. So this structure is the thyroid gland. Here we can see the lobes on each side with the isthmus connecting them. Uh, let's go ahead and look below that. This is the esophagus, uh, and we can see a little bit of that thyroid gland, but we can see those nodules, which are the parathyroid glands. Here is a kidney, and on the surface of the kidney, here is our adrenal gland. Here is a testy. This is the female reproductive system. We can see the uterus and the fallopian tubes or uterine tubes. At the end, here are those uh, fimbria that kind of extend outward, wrapping around. Here we can see one of the ovaries. The other ovary is behind some tissue here, but really the ovary with the developing eggs inside. And lastly, here we see the pancreas, and inside these white structures are the pancreatic ducts. Remember, the pancreatic ducts are what empty the bicarbonate and other digestive enzymes into the duodenum. Out here, the actual uh, tissue of the pancreas itself. This is where the acini cells, which are exocrine, and the islets of Langerhans, which contain the endocrine alpha and beta cells, as well as a few other cell types. So that's it for the endocrine models. Uh, don't forget to watch the other videos for lab exam three. There's a video for the slides. There's a video for the fetal pigs, and there's a video for the reproductive models. All right, take care.